Oh yeah, sexy biscuits. Nice. to Long Boys Post 1975 and welcome to another Fat Friday video, a series of videos where I take a look at some of the more interesting things you can find to eat in the high street. And have I got a doozy for you this week. This is not actually going to be my lunch because, well, it's a chocolate bar. And given the obvious, why is my mouth watering? <laughs> and I don't eat chocolate. It well and truly is is um, Pavlov's dogs, isn't it? When I come to this series of videos and the minute I turn the camera on, camera on, uh, myself and Robert just become hungry. Yes, this is an interesting one and a strange one. And it's funny how I ended up with this because this is a relatively new thing um, from around about March this year, but not the only time that it has been done and yeah and I ended up with it by utter utter sheer accident so a massive thank you to Trevor at work who just randomly bought me this in and a bag of cheese and onion tato crisps um, because of a random conversation we had the day before at lunchtime at work so it is the tato cheese and onion chocolate bar um, made with real crisp pieces Look at that. Don't believe me? Look at that. So, um, I am not um, new to the brand Tato, in the, because they are an Irish brand. I'm going out on a limb here. By all means, anyone from Ireland, correct me down below. But, this is based on my, you know, just general knowledge of the company. I want to say they're from Northern Ireland, but obviously their products are also available in Southern Ireland, which is where I first became aware of them. Because in the early noughties hate that phrase therefore I shall say in the early 2000s I spent a lot of time in Dublin <clears throat> and in Belfast because I was in charge of setting up um, small uh, mobile computer networks that people could have it be annual AGM meetings for companies for shareholders and things like that and so it was a really cool job incredibly stressful but it was awesome in the sense that I would start off the week uh, in the Bristol office then I would fly to Scotland, do a um, set up a network downtown there, uh, and then fly to uh, London, uh, and then fly to do the same thing, and then fly to Dublin. But sometimes I would also fly, I'd start the week, sorry, by getting a train to London and then flying to Northern Ireland. You know, it was it was weird and it, it was stressful, but it was a very interesting job and it meant I got to go to a lot of places. And uh, since my reputation preceded me as someone who was an absolute crisp junkie, even then, everyone in the uh, Dublin office told me to go and bag as much potato stuff as I could. And eventually I had an Irish girlfriend who would used to send me because she was in the office. So it was a long distance relationship, but it wasn't that difficult. Can't believe the amount of detail I'm going into in this video. It wasn't that difficult for us because obviously um, I got to travel so frequently at least once or twice a week to the Dublin office. But she used to send me care packages. For people in my office, she'd give them to them who would travel to her office when I wasn't there. So, yeah, I became aware of Tato products. And I absolutely loved them and always wondered why, particularly they are a Northern Ireland company. Again, they might not be. That's my understanding. Therefore, that would make them British. So why do we not get them in this country? However, jumping forward uh, 22 years, Tato products, at least the cheese and onion bags, do show up in stores like B&M and uh, Home Bargains. So I think it's a stock clearance thing of other companies and things like that. So you can, if you look around hard enough, get Tato products. And I've been fond of them. I really have. I don't know if they still make it, but back in the day, that would be the early 2000s, not noughties, for I hate that phrase, um, their flaming hot crisps were, they were absolutely lovely. I'm absolutely dying here. Anyway, so... Apparently, this has been around since early March, and it's the equivalent of a pound a bar. Um, well, no, it's not. It's a pound a bar if it's Northern Ireland, isn't it? Because Northern Ireland is not part of the EU. 
they've got cents. Uh, and, um, yeah, so it's a pound a bar. Don't know what that will make it in euros in, um, you know, uh, Southern Ireland. But, yeah, and apparently they've been sold out absolutely everywhere because they are so popular. Not just because, you know, people might genuinely like cheese and onion and chocolate. Uh, but also there's a kind of, you know, curiosity, gimmick and gross factor, which is why people buy it. If you look on eBay, they're on there and they go for around about £3 a bar. And is there a weight on it? It's a very, very small bar. But then I'm not a massive fan. Well, I don't eat chocolate. So you could say, well, why are you eating this? Simple. It's got cheese and onion crisps in it. Right. So I was at work and I was talking to my mate Trevor. And don't ask me how, but the conversation came around to, did you know that once upon a time, many, many moons and years ago, so they must have done this before, else I wouldn't have mentioned this and ended up with this in my hand, that Tato did this before. Whether or not it was cheese and onion, I want to say it was, but we'll get to that momentarily. They did this before and he said, oh, I've got one. They've done it since. They must have done it really recently because my mate uh, always brings me over Irish stuff and like that. I've got one because I wasn't a fan of it. Um, but yeah, I've got some knocking around. And then the next day he came into lunch and just whipped it out. Awkward. <laughs> the bar of chocolate, that is. And just went, hey, I found this for you. There you go. Uh, and I was like, oh, you legend, sir, you legend. I shall make this a Fat Friday video. So... Now, talking, when I showed this on Facebook, one of my mates, one of my Irish mates, who I became friends with from um, working in that company back in the day and going to Southern Ireland and hanging out with her uh, outside of work, and we went to see you too at Slane Castle. She said, it's not as stupid as you might think it is because a very, very Irish thing to do is make a crisp sandwich. That's not the very Irish thing. I'm sure everyone does that. Um, but you have to do it with cheese and onion potatoes. So that might be where this came from. So this is not a silly idea. You know, it's grounded in something because my friend said this is a very Irish snack to do and lots of people do it. Butter your bread, a thick layer of cheese and onion potatoes and either break up dairy milk chunks or use dairy milk buttons. I do intend to try making that possibly in this series of videos as I did do the Chinese McDonald's well, I made it, but Chinese McDonald's was sliced, uh, slices of fried span with cr crushed Oreos uh, in a burger with mayonnaise. Uh, I'd like to say it's not as bad as it sounds. It's as bad as it sounds. It's in this series of videos, so by all means, go and check it out. So she said that was a genuine thing. And yeah, so that would suggest where it came from. Plus, um, people out there say that, you know, extreme opposites in the taste spectrum, such as sweet, uh, you know, and salty, things like that always go well together look at sweet and sour you know um look at mama in everything with me because you can buy mama chocolate uh chili and chocolate um so yeah it's not an entirely new thing so i would like to read the back out but the light in here is shite but all i can tell you is it's 98 percent milk chocolate 95% uh, milk chocolate, 5% crisps, and all your standard stuff that can be found in chocolates uh, are also in the ingredients. Um, I don't know why it's like that, and then it's like that, you know, right side, wrong side, up. But if you look at their um, customer service, their customer service is at a castle. Tato, Tato Castle, Tato have their own castle. So that is absolutely legendary. So, yeah, well, there you go. There was a little bit of um, unneeded history about me and <laughs> how I came across Tato's and a little bit of, you know, where this came from. So I don't know when this came out the first time, but it was probably at least five years ago. And according to Tinterwebs, they only made 480,000 of these bars. Sure, half a million sounds like a lot, but once it's, you know, reputation precedes it and it gets outside of Northern Ireland or Ireland in general, or both islands, if you will, um, then there's going to be demand for it. Hence the fact that it's on eBay and it now goes for three quid a bar. Now, me and my sort of OCD, uh, you know, and completionist, this really pains us. To open this and the thing is I don't hate chocolate uh, I like my chocolate it's the only chocolate I still eat but you can't get it anymore I haven't had a bar of that in about three years it's called a very peculiar chocolate my chocolate look it up they used to make Easter eggs and stuff got it they don't I just stopped eating chocolate like when I was a kid and when I say when I was a kid I mean like in the 90s and I never really got my taste back for it however it does not mean I hate it I'm just indifferent to it but in the name of Fat Friday, I think it is only fair that I give this bad boy a go. Shall I do this? Because, hey, this is going to be my thumbnail. 
<laughs> just thought you should know that as well. So let's get into it. You're probably saying, well, Dave, where is your palate cleanser of choice? I do not have one for I am only going to eat this. I haven't had lunch today and today is actually um, Friday. But since this is my Fat Friday, I guess I'll have to eat something for lunch that I've had before to not spoil any of the stuff I've got knocking around in my freezer for next week. Uh, although you could argue I could just um, cook it and make it, make a video and put it out next week because I'm going to eat something anyway, aren't I? But yeah, so this is not my lunch. I'm doing this because not just for you guys, but I am very, very um, curious as to what this tastes like. So it's cheese and onion crisps in milk chocolate and the cheese and onion is because it's tart, I believe. Oh, it's gold wrapper as well. Oh, see, and it's old school. None of this, like, when they ruined Kit Kats, you could no longer push outside and drag your nail down it. I like the fact that they still put the chocolate in foil like that and not a sealed bag. Because some things are sacred. Right, let's open this bad boy up. So it says, packed. Packed with real crisp bits. But the back says only 5%. Let's have a look at the chocolate. Very it's very, very uh, simple, plain design. It's not like they've got their logo on it or anything like that. But then let's be honest, as far as I can tell, Tato are primarily a crisp brand. And I don't know if they make anything else in the chocolate or sweet um, department. What does it smell like chocolate-wise? It does not smell like dairy milk. Um, you know, it does not smell like Cadbury chocolate, I should say. It is milk chocolate. I don't want to handle it too much because I don't want to get to melt it. And I don't want to get those... Horrible chocolatey fingers you see kids walking around with. It's almost got like a fries chocolate kind of smile. A Hershey's chocolate. Oh, don't be like Hershey's. Greasy, squeaky chocolate. Not a fan. Kind of got a Hershey smile to it. But let's see. We'll take off a chunk of three off so we can see if you can see any crisps in it. I can't see anything in that. Where are these packed full of crisps? bits um i guess it must be very very fine we're gonna have to eat quite a bit of this then to see if we can see if we i can i am able to show you that uh anyway two tears in a bucket especially because I'm not a massive fan of chocolate two tears in a bucket fuck it right there's a crunch there's a definite crunch. Whether or not you could see them, there is a definite crunch. Your first hit immediately is a very sweet milk chocolate. Chocolate. And then, it's certainly not as strong. Maybe the chocolate's blowing me away. Oh, that is sweet. Because I don't need it. Mmm. Definite crunch. But the cheese and onion. I'm trying not to speak when my mouth is full. But obviously. The crunch is still going. The crisps remain after the chocolate is gone. Um, let's break it clean in half. Um, yeah. There's a cheese and onion taste. And it's quite subtle and it's not weird you get this massive hit of sweetness and then you just get cheese and onion and it's actually quite pleasant mm. that's a definite grower I don't want chocolatey fingers. To anyone who saw my post of this on Facebook, see the crunch continues after most of the chocolate's dissipated. Saw my post on Facebook and immediately left the, oh, that looks disgusting. Bearing in mind, you can't write anything off until you taste it. That's just the way it looks. Um, taste is subjective. Well, taste is, no, sorry, taste is technically, um, it's something you uh, you acquire as opposed to something that you um 
the, that is subjective because the the, uh, the analogy I would say to that is if you live on a if you you know you're shipwrecked on an island the only thing you can eat is um, coconuts and you hate coconuts you'll love them you'll love them before the end of the year is there so um, taste is acquired it's not preference but also it is nowhere near what you think it would be I don't know what I was expecting strength wise. Chocolate. It doesn't taste like Hershey's chocolate, thank fuck like that for that. It smells like it. Doesn't smell like cabbage chocolate, but tastes alright, decent milk chocolate. Then as it sort of you know, you know, breaks down in your mouth, uh, you know, goes to the cream a creamiest texture, you know, think chocolate when you eat it. That's when you get the taste of cheese and onion. It's not overpowering, it's very, very subtle. And it works. It actually works. Uh, that would be the reason they chose cheese and onion as a flavour because of its tart nature against the sweetness of chocolate but it really does work and I'm not a massive chocolate fan as you know but I like this mm. if it didn't have cheese and onion in it I wouldn't be eating it honestly that is the hook for me that is the hook and it really does work don't think to yourself oh nasty i'm not going to try that shit first of all you're probably not going to try your shit because it's quite hard to get apparently but if you do come across it in your travels buy a shitload of it and put it on ebay would be my first advice but the second one is don't write it off try it mm. <laughs> sorry disgusting i'm aware of that i really like it it's really subtle it's crispy chunky bit again there it's really really well done it's not overpowering anything like that you're probably thinking that you're just going to get a massive hit in the face by the cheese and onion shovel you don't it's been, they've been, they've obviously put some thought into this they really obviously put some thought into this and i obviously like it because that's what's left and I'm going to save that for some other people to try it in this house. But that is the most chocolate I've eaten in about five years combined. So honestly, Tato ch uh, cheese and onion chocolate bar made with real bits of cheese and onion crisps. Obviously, it's a Northern Ireland thing or a Southern Ireland thing or both Ireland's thing. Um, it's not a British thing. Well, it's that would make it a little bit of a British thing. But you know what I mean? It's not available in the... Well, it is because I had the British... On the mainland, Britain, is what I'm saying. But, um, honestly, I recommend it. I really do. I'm very, very pleasantly surprised by that. Then, obviously, they're not going to make... As much as that might be a gimmick to some people, they've, you know, they've looked into this. They've done a bit of investigation. They're not going to bang something out there that, even with its gimmick nature, it's probably going to cost them money. In which case, it hasn't here. Although it has, because they could have charged three quid a bar. But, yeah, honestly, I really do recommend it. Here's the thing now, though. Windy Pops. Oh, the Windy Pops is a lash of cheese and onion. Awkward, horrible, sorry. Um, that's the most chocolate I've had in years. I feel a little bit sick now. You know, sugary sick, not yak yak sick, just sweet sick, if that makes sense. Anyway, as always, I'd love to know what you think, especially if you have tried these, or you tried them when they were around the first time around, if that was cheese and onion, or if it was a different flavour. And as always, I'd love to know what you think. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you later. Mm-mm. <clears throat>